broke it down really simply. The same way I teach real estate, I teach high level real estate investing, I'm talking about commercial real estate investing, 1031 tax exchanges, how to defer taxes, how to finance real estate, how to do strategic partnerships, how to flip homes, rent homes. I teach it all in a very simplistic way using my whiteboards. So I'm gonna do the same thing for our community on our solution, right? So the title to this really is, uh, why unity, right, and how. I believe our answer, our solution is to unify. I think most of us think that's what the answer is, is to unify. But what does unity look like? And why should we unify really? And so I'm gonna to explain to you the why and then how we do it practically, uh, concise, realistic action steps. So not just fluff, not just great thought leader books and conferences and panels and just verbiage and talk, but let's get to an actual, actual practical action step, a step-by-step -step blueprint of how we can do this. So we gotta remember, when you're solving big problems, the way that you solve major problems, right? When you're uh, revamping a company or you're doing a corporate turnaround or any major problem, you gotta work backwards. You gotta identify the problem, why it exists, and then you, the solution you typically find by working backwards. So we gotta talk about the problem is our oppression and that we're allowed to be mistreated in the United States of America. Black Americans, Africans in America, or African Americans, are allowed to be mistreated. And why is that? Why are we so mistreated and why are we allowed to be mistreated? We are so mistreated because the, 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 the country's infrastructure, its system, was created with uh, leveraging the labor and leveraging the human capital of African people. The system, the culture of the system, the amendments, the constitution was all created with Africans in mind as less than. It's just how the business was built. The American business was built like that. And no matter if you put good cops or good politicians or a good president or good congressman in office, it's still the same system. You're putting good people into a bad system. So you're always going to get results that are unequal or degrading or, or oppressive towards the African people because it's always designed that way. You can't break the design unless you just redo the whole thing. So that's one reason of the why and how it's allowed to happen, right? And why it's allowed to happen is because Africans in America don't have some common things that every other nationality in America has. So we look at Portuguese Americans, and I probably spelled that wrong, but that's okay. Italian Americans, Russian Americans, Irish Americans, Polish Americans, Japanese Americans, Chinese Americans, Korean Americans, Mexican Americans, even Native Americans. All these American subcultures have things in common that African Americans don't. And so because of those things, African Americans are allowed to be treated differently than everyone else. See, years ago during uh, World War II, Japanese Americans were put into internment camps because America was scared that Japanese Americans were going to revolt during World War II. So they locked them all up and put them in camps. And that was a human rights violation. For just two years, they put Japanese Americans in camps for no reason because they were scared of their revolt. So America had to pay restitution and reparation to the ancestors and descendants of those Japanese Americans for those two years of camps. America was held accountable in world court and to Japan because of that action, right? So the difference is Japan, Poland, Chinese, Korean, America has a responsibility to these countries. Where is it at? I got it somewhere, I'm walking to it. But all these countries, all these nationalities have a homeland. And America has responsibility to their national origin, their nation of origin, and their homeland. And America has responsibility to the world court. All these countries are part of the world court, and America has to answer to the world court on a global stage for any oppression to these nationalities. The difference being with African Americans, there's no direct homeland or nation or nationality or country to back African Americans up. So America doesn't have to be held accountable for its human rights violations against African Americans. Because there's nobody to fight for them. There's nobody to fight for us. And then when we fight for ourselves and burn a building down or potentially shoot someone or do something violent and we're called radicals or terrorists for standing up for ourselves. So we have no country to stand up for ourselves. We're looked down upon by our own people when we use any kind of aggression to stand up for ourselves. So all we're taught to do is turn, turn the other cheek, take the pain, take the oppression, deal with it. And so any kind of people that is taught to be passive 
and turn the other cheek. Never revolt. America was built on a revolution. America re revolted against the, co the uh, original um, colonies, revolted against Great Britain for being oppressive. We celebrate the 4th of July because America killed people to be free from Great Britain. America revolted. But God forbid African Americans revolt for their oppressive treatment. We're radicals. So let's break this down. Being that we can't right now, we're not going to defend for ourselves, and we're fractured, we're not even unified to even do so, and there's no country to back us, this is why African Americans are held powerless and why we have been allowed to be oppressed and so many injustices and murders and mass incarceration and war on drugs, stop and frisk, black codes, Cointel Pro, vagrancy tactics, enslavement, Google all these things I'm talking about, Cointel Pro, black code, vagrancy tactics, right? All these things have existed within us. Tuskegee experiment, they experimented on our people. They actually took our people and did horrific experiments on us like animals. So all these things have happened under the American flag and have been allowed to happen because there's nobody to back us up. The continent of Africa can't back us up because it's multiple countries. So what we need to do in order to fix this problem, right? So what's missing from African Americans as opposed to everyone else is everyone else has a self-made identity. Everyone else has a flag. They have a home country, land, right? A nation of origin. They have consistent culture. All these things, even Native Americans have a consistent culture. Mexican Americans, consistent culture. They have a flag, right? They all have a national anthem, pledge their, pledge their flag all part of their culture. African Americans, no self-made identity. Somebody named us. We didn't even name ourselves. Flag. We don't have no flag. I accept our flag. Many of us, maybe a, a quarter, 10% of us, but out of 42 and a half million, every home should be adopting and accepting this flag given to us by Marcus Garvey, the red, black, and the green. But commonly, we don't accept it. It's not nationally recognized. Our flag, being that we built America, our flag should certainly be part of the national culture of America. I believe. I think that's fair. But until we unify, we can't make any kind of demand such as that. So let's talk about this. We need these things which are missing. And this is the difference between us and every other nationality while we get treated differently, while we're held powerless. Again, so the result of us not having these things, lack of self-pride, lack of self-worth, lack of dignity, lack of unity, lack of culture, and lack of power. This is what's wrong with African-American people. This is why we can sag our pants and not feel dignified. Why we can call our women bitches or hoes or call ourselves niggas or gangsters or pimps. Why we use such degrading terms and words and why we treat each other this kind of way is because there's no pride, there's nothing, to, there's nothing bigger than ourselves. Outside of our religions, there's nothing bigger than ourselves. And as Malcolm X said, our greatest forefather, or one of our greatest forefathers at least, arguably the greatest, I think, so what he said in the ballot or the bullet is we got to put our religions and our differences aside. And I want to take it a step further and say our sexual orientations, our skin tones, our education levels, our economic classes. Screw all that. At the end of the day, we all are Africans in America. We all come from one common descent, one common lineage. And that's the place of Africa. We are an assortion of African countries and African tribes kidnapped and brought here, and we're the ancestors of those who were enslaved here, Jim Crow here, mass incarcerated here, war and drugged here, brutalized here, right? Unequal school systems here, unequal uh, housing here. We are those people, we have one thing in common, that's us, it's our pain, our trauma. So we have to unify that pain, that trauma, that experience together under one flag, and, and, and we don't have a home country. Right now, America's our home country, so we gotta be a nation, within a nation, because we're a nation without a nation. So cool, America's the land in which we're on. Now you say, Jay, well how do we unify, right? We want to unify under one flag, one identity. We want to unify under a consistent culture, right? Understanding our, our homeland is Africa, but now we have a new homeland in a sense that we have to negotiate with. Um, understanding that we need a national anthem and pledge our flag, right? Basic culture, basic core values. So Jay, how do you do it though? Right? So it sounds good in theory, but how do you do it? So now I'm going to give you the practical action steps of how we live this out. And I'm going to tell you why it's so important outside of just the culture, power, and unity. So one solution, right? And of course we can build on this, but I think it's a great framework to build off of. And I, and I, I, I spit this at many people, all, Tamika Mallory and I just had a big conversation about this, and I'll hammer home to anybody. We need to have a self-imposed vote, meaning no one else outside of African Americans no one else. We need to vote within ourselves internally for our own identity 
and adopt our own flag, which I believe we kind of have the flag part down. It's the identity part we need to have and raising our hand and saying, hey, guess what, you know what? We are this and we say so because we say so, not because you said so. We got to take our power back. If someone has the right to put a name on you and label on you, you didn't have no power. You're subject to that person forever. So we, we were captured and kidnapped, our ancestors, and then enslaved, but set free under the same government that kidnapped us and participating in our kidnapping and our torture and our Holocaust and our enslavement. So therefore, we have no power being under the same government system with no identity, with no unity, no infrastructure. We have no power. There's no leverage. We can't negotiate justice. We can't negotiate police brutality. You're still talking about body cameras. We got more micro, macro issues to deal with. So if we do a self-imposed vote, my suggestion is either 51 uh, votes or 101 votes. It's gotta be an odd number. So in case we get a tie break, you don't have to get a tie. So if we take our 50 top influencers, activists, celebrities, athletes, uh, religious leaders, etc., or it could be our top 100 athletes, uh, celebrities, activists, religious leaders, etc. We take our top 100 or top 50 of the most influential people who believe that the simple model, why wouldn't you want, why are, you, why are we so scared to want our own? People are like, wait, that's, that, that's radical to say that you want your own flag, you know? Why wouldn't we? We had it before we were taken. Why would you not want to go back to our original power? Why are you comfortable succumbing to being the dependent and being under someone's thumb? That's the slave nature still in you. We got to get rid of that, the fear of being independent. It's okay to be independent. I'm not saying let's burn America down. I'm saying let's build America up as we've been doing, but let's do it as a unified people with their chest out, some posture that can literally say, we have identified ourselves, we have waken up, we are equal to all. To be equal, we have to act as equals. And I just proved to you, we're not equal to all the other nationalities because of what we don't have that they have. So in order to be equal, we have to give ourselves what everyone else has that we don't have. So here's how we give it to ourselves. We do an internal vote. We do an odd number, so that way we, we just know there's a tiebreaker. Now, we have 50 influencers or 100 influencers. The odd one is going to be an electronic or online vote by the people. So the masses of everyone else all get the vote. And that vote total equals one vote. So whatever name, whether it's African American, Pan African, New African, United Africans of America, or United Africans in America, or any other name that we want to throw in the pot, we vote on all the names of our own identity. 50 of us plus all the tens of millions of us all equal one vote. The 50 influencers, the purpose of that is if our 50 top celebrities, activists, religious leaders, and, and, uh, and sports, you know, professional athletes all vote, we're 100 of them, and we, they, we all agree that whatever name we get is going to be our name. And then we do this vote. Their constituents, their followers, their supporters, their fans will all likely go along with what they say. So if all the general public gets a one vote, right? So everyone can still vote. Everyone has a voice. But we're going to give our leaders and influencers kind of like, uh, they're kind of like delegates or super delegates. Like you look at the, 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 the Republican or Democratic conventions. These are like our, our big delegates, right? Because they have big constituencies. So we're going to give them a bigger say-so in a sense. But the people still get a vote, right? A tie-breaking vote in a sense. So we're going to have all of them vote, right? Uh, we'll put three to five or however many of the names, most common names that we refer by. The majority wins. Any tie will be brought back as a re-vote. And then on, on the qualifying names, and we'll re-vote on those names until we come up with one name that we all walk away with and put our fists in the air and be like, yo, we are now Pan-Africans in America. We are now new Africans in America. We're still just African-Americans, but we decided for ourselves, not you. Or we're Africans of America. And that's what we'll be in. We'll be UAA, United Africans of America. And that will be our nationality, and nobody can take that from us. Now we go in history of books as our own people. We'll make history together by simply doing it for ourselves, doing it for Marcus Garvey, doing it for Malcolm X, doing it for Dr. King, doing it for Rosa Parks, doing it for Harriet Tubman. Like, this is what they wanted. And we're in the information age. We have an opportunity to actually pull this off. Stop letting somebody else control us. We take our destiny into our own hands. We take our power back. 